Hello, it's Polly Knits again. It is April 14th, 2018. Welcome back to Polly Knits. Thank you for coming and checking me out if you are. Thank you for returning. <laughs> and Coco will make her cameo here quick. Coco, they all love pet cameos. Look. Say hi, Coco. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, good girl. Let's see. I'll hold you up here while I talk. Let's see. How about that? Oh. <laughs> she likes to turn, and she will only sit one way. So, I'm Polly Knits. I am Polly81 on Ravelry. I am Polly Knits on Instagram. My Etsy shop is Polly Knits, uh, with a capital P and a capital K. Let me move a little this way. Okay. Um,. Facebook, I don't really do, I don't, I'm not all into that, like, I don't even want to see what other people are sharing. I feel like, um, people just share way too much on Facebook, so I am not gonna overshare. You can go, Coco. <laughs> so, Twitter, I don't Twitter. Instagram, Polynets. There's no Snapchat, I don't even know what that is. I'm an old fool, okay. I'm kidding. Um, I, there's a there's a couple new ones. I don't do any of those. I just do um, Instagram, a little bit of Facebook, and Ravelry. So that's me. Um, oh, and I have a blog. I do Blogspot, um, knitting polyblogspotcom and I had a comment over there from some person saying, why do you use Blogspot? And I'm pretty sure that was a bot trying to get me to go somewhere else because I'm confused. I just delete it. Probably. Um, so WhatsApp. Oh, I'll show you my show notes because it's not show notes without fun um, art and coloring. <laughs> so uh, we're still doing our spring cleaning. We started on our garage, clearing that out and getting it all nice. And like, it's weird, because every winter, that garage always gets messy, and um, every spring, we always, it feels like we just have to clean it out so hard, and, um, <laughs> yeah, so we're working on that, it's not, it's not a disaster, we're just organizing, and we're going to be getting rid of a lot of old stuff that Mike had, and cleaning it up, we did, uh, E-waste, we took a computer and some stuff to the e-waste, so we found out if it doesn't have a motherboard, you have to just dump it. They won't take take it. Um, they took all the cords, though, so that was good. And um, I'm sure we have batteries or something else to go. Uh, those big, long light bulbs, no one takes those. How do you recycle those? You know, the um, fluorescent. And so we did a big dump haul and an e-waste haul. We've also been out in the yard working, getting our lawn back to normal after all that stuff we had done last year. So um, we're out there pulling so many weeds and just weeding. And Mike is like seeding the lawn. And we've been having um, rain, sun, rain, sun. So that's cool. Um, so out in the yard, uh, I have a bed with roses in it. Every year I put annuals. And this year I'm thinking about adding bulbs as long as I can try to make it to where they don't take over the bed because the last person that lived in this house planted bulbs called Lucifer bulbs and um, they're really pretty, but they are big. They take over and I have to dig them out of the ground so I have room for my other flowers. Um, I've actually tried removing all of them and I've never been able to. They just, they come back with a vengeance. But I have three rose bushes in a row back there with space. I left space for flowers so I can get in there and do whatever I want each year. Um, Mike's pretty good about letting me have my yard projects too, so. Um, so I've been weeding that bed out, and sorry, you can see my hands are. <laughs> um, see, what I need to be doing is knitting while I'm talking to you. Uh, 
anyways. So that's happening. I haven't bought any flowers or anything yet. I'm still working on clearing the beds and um, getting our bushes right how we like them. And um, this summer I'm going to also have the pig. We have a picnic table we bought. I'm going to belt sand that thing and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to put a really nice stain on it and then I'm going to put probably a clear coat of some kind of water seal or something because it, it did get all cracked. So, um, Also with the garden, I wanted to tell you the annuals, they are the flowers that you usually call it like a color pop that you see out in front of Rite Aid or Kmart or Walmart or any of these stores that sell them every year. Annuals are the flowers that you have to keep buying again and again. They only last one growing season. Although I have had flowers come back. Um, my zinnias came back for a second year and I they were I thought they were supposed to be an annual. Um, perennials are the ones that come back every year and they sleep during the cold months in the winter, but they're still alive underground. So bulbs are perennials. Um, so they save the gardener money because you don't have to keep buying them every year. So um, I'm really just into the annuals, really. And um, so I'm just, I haven't really figured out how I want to design, design that bed yet. But um, it'll be fine. I have a ladybug house out there too, but they haven't woken up yet, so I don't know if they're even in there. So, uh, we also got out for another bike, a couple bike rides on our bike path. Uh, I always share the pictures on Instagram of our ride. It's about 10 miles along the Humboldt Bay, and it's beautiful. And um, we also got out to the dog park a few times, which is nice. And Coco's really enjoying it. It gets her some exercise and it makes her socialize with other dogs, which she doesn't like to do. So we have to try to make her get out there and socialize and play. And um, she's more of a pupil dog. So, <laughs> but ever since we got her as a puppy, we've been really social. We've made sure she's been socializing ever since we got her because um, if you hold your dog too close and never let him down, it's not a good idea. You need to get the dog out there. <laughs> you need to let the dog do things on its own. Um, like our family that was just here, um, Mike's sister-in-law has a chihuahua, and everyone told her, don't hold that chihuahua, don't keep holding that chihuahua and cuddling it like every single day. Now it's a big chihuahua, and it will not get off of her. <laughs> So, um, it's very needy and, um, and that's what happens with small dogs is they will do that. So I try, Coco, Coco is very spoiled and I try not to do that with her, but she's also really good at walking and getting out on her own. So, um, we take her off the leash and everything. She's fine. And what else here? Let's see. Oh, uh, <laughs> My sister got married yesterday, and I don't usually talk about family stuff, but she's my older sister. Um, she's my sister that took me in after my dad passed away when I was in high school. And um, so she is getting, she got married. Um, I can't wait to meet her husband. I kind of met him over the um, video. And um, so they had to get married fast because they have some... Um, what did I say on here? Yeah, they had some circumstances where they just needed to get get married quick. And the way my sister has been talking about it, I don't think they were excited about a ceremony at all. So they went to the courthouse and got married and shared it on Facebook. So it was kind of a Facebook wedding. <laughs> like I said, too much information on Facebook. Um... And let's see. So that was really nice. Um, and I told my sister, you don't have, not everybody has a ceremony. Like I have an aunt who went and got married. And then um, later on, they had a reception later that year. So if she really felt like having a party or a reception, 
to let people celebrate her life and wedding and happiness, then she can do that. Or she doesn't, you don't have to do anything. You know, it's up, like these days, it's totally, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the other thing, anyways, enough about family stuff. Um, did I say anything? Yeah, that's it about the wedding. Um, we also have a Eureka and Arcata. These are um, two towns that are next to each other on other sides of the Humboldt Bay. Um, they We each have an art night. So um, we went to the Eureka one and that was a lot of fun going around looking at art. And I found this little shop called the Wine Spot. So we go in there and it's like this horseshoe bar in this uh, brightly lit room and you can order wine, you can order food, you can order all, uh, you can, like they have a lot of selection and they have beer too so you could actually bring your friend who drinks beer because when Mike and I go out I like to drink wine, he does not like drinking wine and so that's nice that they have another option. Um, the bar that he likes to go to that's uh, on our plaza is a college dive bar and I hate it because it smells awful in there and I have more class than that. I need to have... <laughs> Anyways, I like to go socialize and have a glass of wine. I don't want to just go into a dive bar to have a freaking cocktail. <laughs> that's not really that. I don't know. Everybody's different, but... So that happened, and that was really nice, and then yesterday was actually Arts Arcata, which is the town I live in. So we went down to the plaza, and we well, we did a loop around the plaza, and we found this restaurant called The Burger Joint, and it's new. And so we went in, kind of hesitated, so I went in, they had a, a build your own burger menu. Um, it was really good. I got chicken. I got a chicken sandwich with avocado. And that's my way of being healthy and stuff is trying to eat less beef because triglycerides. I have a problem with that. So anyways, um, so we found that food and then, um, looked at art last night and so... I uh, came home and we watched Master Chef Kids, which I love that show. Those kids are so talented. I don't know how they do it. I really don't. I'm no chef. I try so I can be healthy, you know. I mean, you have to cook your own food if you want to be healthy. <laughs> so I'm told. Uh, so, the next thing I have to talk about is the Etsy shop. I decided just to do stitch markers in there for now. I've changed up my stitch markers and my wire. Um, I had a friend come over who is in the jewelry business. She makes earrings and stuff for her brother's store. And he sells online, so she kind of knows um, how to do it. And she knows a lot about wire and beads and sizes and gauges and all that stuff. So she came over and gave me some suggestions. Uh, she told me my wrapping is really nice because I don't want anything sticking out. And I want the wrap to be really pretty. It can't be messy. <laughs> so I went on. Now I've gone on Etsy and I've looked at a couple shops from these podcasters. Sorry, my leg's falling asleep. Who sells stitch markers? And I looked at their prices and how theirs looked and their wire and their wraps. And I just kind of browsed around and looked at different people just to see and get kind of the feel of what people are doing out there with stitch markers. And I think I'm doing pretty good. So I changed everything up. There's no loop at the bottom anymore, like my first ones, unless you want that, which some people do like that. And, um,. I did get in new supplies, so I'll show you. Um, I got in new bags that my card will fit in because um, the last bag I got from Michael's, the card wouldn't fit. And I want 
my packaging to have a card and the stitch markers inside. So I also got these. Come on. Sorry when the screen goes black. Um, so these are the pins that I use. This bag is a hundred pins. And um, I got four bags. So I got 400 pins. And um, I'll just say that. <laughs> it was not off of Etsy. I, I kept running out, so I had to order a lot. And then I also found um, Swars. I can't say this to save my life. Swarovski, right? It's so little, too, right there. Swarovski. I'm going to go with it. I got the darker one. These are... Let's see what color are these. Capri Blue. Which are... Let's see. I love crystals. And these are indigo blue. These are 4 millimeter bicone which are my favorite crystals to use. Nice shape. So I liked I like doing those with turtles. Um, there are some turtles in the shop right now. They're pretty cool. Um, I'm getting the hang of the Etsy shop still, so <laughs> it's fun. I sold two things and that showed me how it works and my partner's excited about it and um, I'm having fun making stitch markers. If you have any comments about it or suggestions, I have a, a thread in Ravelry for the Etsy shop. So you're welcome to say anything in there to me that you want. The next thing um, about the Etsy shop and Ravelry is that I've created my first poll. I've never done that before on Ravelry. So uh, it's all about stitch markers. Do you like? ring stitch markers, do you like claw stitch markers, do you use stitch markers, do you use both, and then I wrote, um, leave a comment below and tell me more, like, what kind of design of a stitch marker do you like, do you want food, do you like underwater life, do you like, I mean, I'm doing, um, island, like, turtles, I like island stuff, um, there are some skulls in the shop right now, some of them have loops, some of them don't. My older stuff that is in the shop, um, you're getting a lot extra because that's before my friend came over and added everything up and told me what I should be um, doing for the $10. Like how many beads and... Um, you, you can tell that I don't really know my jewelry uh, <laughs> vocabulary, but... Um, but Fixings? I don't know. But, like, to per once you put all the wire and the beads and the rings and the claws and everything together, like, how many can you do? Because, um, so I've decided on three ring markers and one claw. My first ones were four ring markers and one claw with tons of beads and crystals all over them, and they're still in the shop for $10. <laughs> I am not going to change that. Unless they go on sale, I don't know how to do that. But um, the new design is a little bit different, so it's fun. Um, also, in the Ravelry group, we're having a spring along. So the only rule in that is just to be a member of the Ravelry group. And um, yeah, just post what you're doing in there. It doesn't have to be knitting or crochet. Um, show your garden that you worked hard on because that's working still that's crafty that's creativity um like did you redecorate a room you could show the before and after picture if it's like because to me that's like spring is when we're doing all these projects um so yeah just i'm enjoying it there's someone else who's been posting in there i've been posting in there um, there'll be a prize at the end. Um, I mean, there's not going to be a ton of people in there. Someone will get something. 
Oh, that's funny. Okay. Let me turn the page of my show notes. See, I'll show you. I don't mind showing my show notes. <laughs> I'm telling you, in high school, I would not have got through English without my teacher letting me doodle on my folder. Um, I was in the special ed English, so everyone in there, it was sixth period, and we were all doodling on our folders, ready to leave. And that was not an easy, <laughs> yeah, high school. Let's get into high school talk. Yeah, all right. Okay. So, end of the knitting. I didn't work on all my projects, and I'm not going to share everything. By the way, this is just ice water. Um, I had I already had two cups of iced tea, so... Um, I'll start off with finished objects. I can't remember if I showed this last podcast, but I finished... The I'm a Teenage Mutant hat. I did not write anything down for it. And it wasn't in the notes for last uh, last show. So this is Dramatic Knits. No, Leading Man Fiber Arts. Industrial in the box office. Worsted weight yarn. And it's I'm a Teenage Mutant hat from... What is that called? Something dead knits. Anyways. <laughs> I thought I wrote it down last week. No foes. This week I have a foe. Let's see. I did not even write... I didn't write it in here. Oh well. Anyways. Um, all the details are on my Ravelry page. Uh, the hat fits me like a glove. I love it. It's uh, it's got a folded kind of Kitchener together top, and that fits me really well. I think that's what's making it snug up around my neck. Let's see, and the inside. Let's see if you can even see what it looks like. There's like a flap in there. Anyways. Um, I like it. I've been wearing it a lot. It's cool. I want to make more. Okay. So that. There's that. I'll just throw it. And my work's in progress. Not my hair. I uh, finished one sock. These socks are for my sister. Saltwater taffy in the Knit Picks Felici. Um, US Zero needles. The heel is dogwood heather. In the pick stroll, I thought it matched pretty well without messing up the stripes. Uh, the sock blocker is about one inch larger than she needs, so it's probably stretching the sock out. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Um, it's a US zero or two millimeter needle. Sorry, I just dropped that. Okay. Someone was saying, oh, I was watching Ross at Knit Night. Smells like yarn. And he was saying um, he doesn't have sock blockers because he just doesn't think they're for him. And that's cool. But for me, it's much easier to show a sock off on the podcast with a sock blocker rather than no sock blocker. So that's why I like them. The other reason is um, I don't like putting my socks in the dryer, so if Mike accidentally gets my socks in the dryer, I immediately put them on the sock blockers, and so they don't shrink too bad. Um, it helps. Especially with some of the nitpick sock yarn, I have found that mine have shrunk, so shrunk. <laughs> and so the next 
work in progress is brand new and I'm really excited about it. Let me grab everything. It's um everything is on the table here. Okay, so this project uses Nitpix palette. I'm using a lot of Nitpix palette. And um so the reason I'm using Nitpix palette is because it's in my stash and I searched my stash trying to find what I had for a sweater and that's what I have. So this is the flex light. Uh that stitch marker here is on the back. Oops. Yeah, right there. Sorry. So when did I start this? I started this yesterday. So, okay. I'm striping um, Tide Pool Heather with Marble Heather. And there's the neck. You can see the back's higher than the front. I did more short rows this time than I did on my worsted weight flax. And I like this. I think it's going to look good on me. It's fun. I do fudge it a little bit. Uh, I cast on for the smaller neckline than my size requires. And then I do all kinds of short rows in the back. And I mark it just to make sure that I know where that is. Um, so that's how far I've gotten. Oh, the front. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, that's what the neck's going to look like. Nice and snug. No boat neck. No scoop neck. No, you know, I'm spending a lot of time on the sweater. I don't want a bad neck. So, we talk about that on Instagram. <laughs> I'll show you the yarn. That I'm using right now. And if you don't mind me getting up, I have this box and I have three more balls of the gray, the marble down here. And then this is all the, um, Tide pool Heather, and then this green, dark green, I was thinking about adding it at the end, and I just don't think I'm going to need to. I think I have enough of the other two colors. So this is my Box O sweater yarn. And I wanted to show you, um, I got the Netflix catalog. Let me make sure that I'm not showing you my address. And uh, so I went to the palette page for you. Now they usually have a center spread in this catalog that is all the colors. Because everyone knows palette has a million colors. 150 value pack. The, and that is $419.99. You save 20%. <laughs> It's um, right on the side, sorry. You can tell that I'm really good at using the webcam. It's also because my computer is kind of tilted. So yeah, they, um, I mean, they show people knit sweaters out of the palette, so it should be okay. It's 100% Peruvian wool, so I think it'll be nice. Um, like, I love acrylic, but not for garments. Just on me. I don't... Unless I find something. I don't know. Um, okay, so that's a new sweater. Uh, the collar and cuffs are knit on a US 2, which is a 2.75 millimeter. And the body's down to US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter. 
I just, I couldn't stop thinking about knitting a sweater. Even when I went to bed, I was just thinking about, like, sweater knitting, and so I had to, I had to do something. I had to start something, and this is the stash yarn that came up that there's enough to make a sweater with, and this is the free pattern that came up that I have so, uh, yarn for, and I figure since it's fingering weight yarn, it's going to take me a while to make this, and that's a lot of nice knitting time. Um, I like fingering weight yarn. You get a lot of knitting time with it. This is my first sweater doing with fingering weight yarn, and, uh, it's A-OK. -okay. Thumbs up. Okay, so crochet. I do, I have been crocheting. And the first object I'd like to talk about is a washcloth, or dishcloth. I'm using um, Lily Sugar and Cream in white and Handy Crafter. I don't know where the label is, but it's a green. <laughs> I think it's that dessert, the dessert one. <clears throat> this is being crocheted up on a USH. I didn't look up the millimeter, sorry. Um, five point zero millimeter my favorite crochet hook and um, I think it's turning out really wide so you can see the bottom there where the wide is that's where I'm at right here and it's pretty easy um, the way I crochet is I watch YouTube videos and I watched their step-by-step -step tutorials. She has us oh, carrying the yarn. And so you can see that there's a little bit of weird edge right there. And it's just a dishcloth, so I don't think I need to do anything. I'm just going to leave it. The other edge is fine. It's not getting wider or narrower or anywhere, so I'm doing something right. And it's reversible. Uh, the pattern is called the Moss Stitch Crochet Dishcloth. And um, it's by Happy Berry Crochet on YouTube. I have not been able to find her on Ravelry or Instagram, only on YouTube. So if someone knows what her Ravelry and Instagram are, I would like to follow her. And Okay, so that's one. And I have a second crochet item. This might be a little bit weird because I just reached and grabbed for it out of a pile over there. Um, okay, let's see how easy this will be to show. Alright, there's my end. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull this loop so that it doesn't go anywhere. So, there we go. Okay. So, here it is. It's getting bigger. It's hard to show. Okay. This is variegated yarn. Uh, the middle one, the middle yarn here is Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn in an unknown colorway, which is perfect. And then the blue is I love this yarn. No, with love. Sorry, with love from Red Heart. So I'm just going around and around and around. This is a rectangle granny from the Crochet Crowd. Okay, this is the With Love yarn. And I think it's going to be cool after I keep adding colors. These colors are, I think they're going to look cool. Um, so next up, I'm going to use Camo. 
This is I love this yarn as well. Sorry about standing up. Um, so I have two of these that don't have any labels. Variegated, no plans, into the blanket. And one more. I have to show you. It'll be next. This is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. And um, Denim Plus is the color. So I have three more skeins after this of a variegated in the same yarn. Purples and greens, jewel tones. And I'm pretty sure it's over there in a tote in a lower tote, so I would have to take all these totes down to get to it. Otherwise, I would have shared it t with you today. So that's all of my crochet. What did I write? Uh, okay, it's a crochet crowd, variegated acrylic from Stash. Hmm. Okay, I work on this when I'm watching TV in my bedroom or when I'm sitting here at the computer watching Breaking Bad. Um, speaking about TV, I've been watching Breaking Bad, I've been watching Trading Spaces, I've been watching Master Chef, I've been watching The Housewives of Atlanta. They already had their reunion. I'm waiting for a reunion special number two. Um... Okay, let's get on the spinning. So I did. I do have a, something that's kind of finished. Oops. This is four ounces, and I have. I don't know uh, the weight yet because I haven't done my finished. Uh, I haven't done my finishing yet. So this is Oceanic by Highland Handmaids, Superwash BFL, Blue Face Luster. Um, it's a very mar. It's a very what do they call it? Marley. It's beautiful. I'm hoping to get socks out of it. I spun it on the Maja Craft Susie, and I'm ready to apply the second four ounces. So I'll have eight ounces ready to go. Socks. I'm ready to get started on the socks. I think that I can get socks out of this. Yeah. That's a really thin three play. I started that October of 2017. And it's a three ply, eight ounces with just half a pound um, with hope for socks. And um, there's a question in the Highland Handmaids group I went over there and checked and they are missing you Heather and I haven't seen Heather online too much lately but that's life people life happens and sometimes you're not going to be on social media all the time maybe you don't have time to go on Instagram and stuff and um you know I hope for Heather that things will get less hectic I know that she has a day job now so um if you're wondering about Highland Handmaids, Bustros Babe, um, I'm sure she's okay, she's just really busy. <laughs> but I hope she does check Ravelry and, and checks her group. So that's all in the spinning, I only spin one thing at a time right now. Um, and that's all the show notes I have. That's probably not even a really a long video. <laughs> oh well, does it matter? I'm actually thinking about doing a live video like Ross was doing, but I'm kind of scared of it still. So, yeah. I don't know. But all I know is, um, so this is Mike's last night of work this week. So he, he gets tomorrow off and a few days off, so we'll probably just be cleaning and knitting and watching TV. Um, I'd like to get him on the show one time, like even if he just sits through an intro with me, 
I would like him to, like, he doesn't have to sit here and listen to me babble about what I'm making and working on, and even though he enjoys it, but I would like him to come on here and say hi and introduce himself and stuff, and I am going to try to see if I can scare him into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, have a great day. Have a great week. I hope your knitting goes great. I hope you all get sunshine. I hope you all get springtime. I hope you all get colorful, beautiful, warm, everything. <laughs> and, um, yes, have a great week. So I'll see you Friday or the Friday after that. Even though today's Saturday is because Mike keeps coming home on Friday. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Bye.